Hey everyone, this is Athletes and Antiquities, and today I have a very unique item. And it's unique in the sense that I am not, I do not know much about this item. And that is because not much is available on the internet about it. This is a field manual from World War II for U.S. forces, U.S. and British forces to identify German aircraft from the sides, from below, and it also details the armament, as you can see from the title, of each um, plane. So they can say, like, what is the, uh, what sorts of weapons do they have on whatever plane, whatever bomber. And so I've Googled a lot about this, and I've seen, I've found one copy of a very similar book, and instead of German aircraft and armament, it is the Italian aircraft and armament. There, it, there's one selling on eBay. But aside from that, I've never seen this exact book. I've never seen really pictures of one that's similar to this. There are similar books that are, there's a, I found some from the War Department, the Basic Field Manual of Military Intelligence for German Aircraft. And it's very similar, but it doesn't, it's not this. So this is very unique. Um, if you do know much, if you do know anything about it, uh, please let me know. But all I know is that it was uh, Lieutenant Adams. I actually spoke to his wife. She's the one that she was, um, he had passed away and she was not looking to keep this. And she knew that I was interested in this kind of a thing. And she asked me if I wanted it. And I, of course, said yes, after making sure it was okay. And she really did want to part ways with it, but she did. So I have this now and it's one of my most, it's one of my, the favorite, my favorite items in my collection. And part of the reason is because of the story, I actually know who, who this belonged to. And on top of that, it's also extremely rare from what I can gather because I've never seen a real example of it on the internet. So I'm just gonna go through what it's about, what the pages contain, and I thought you guys just might wanna see it. So yeah, so it's from the, it's uh, restricted uh, classified information from the time. It's from the Assistant Chief of Air Staff. This was before the Air Force was founded. So they operated from with the Army and yes yeah, so looking in german aircraft and armament it's uh from the war department of dc and the the, the first call pages are not super exciting i'm trying to flip through this very carefully so as you can see it has every page contains a picture of whatever aircraft they're talking about this is the fw 190 it has a basic overview the, a description of the plane it has profiles side front and underneath so where this is flying overhead you can identify you, you can identify if this is friend or foe and also what type of enemy you're dealing with and on this page it details all the performance attributes the ranges of all the weapons um all the specifications the the freight loads stuff like that very interesting i'm going to go through one page very slowly and then the other ones i'm going to kind of flip through so if you want to read this i'll pause this here for a second this is the FW-190. Here's the picture above. It has a photograph as well as the diagrams detailing where the guns are and what it, what the profile of it looks like. One more time over here, just in case you guys want to read this. Pause. Sorry, shaky hands. So every page kind of has this. Most of the pages are filled out. There are some where not much is known about said planes. So some of the sections might be blank. But um, this one doesn't have a photograph. It's merely another diagram. So I'm not going to go through every single page. Uh, but every page is very similar to this. I just find this absolutely fascinating. The, um, the level of detail that these went into. And just the history involved in here. Because... This was actually carried by a U.S. soldier at the time. I'm not going to try. I'm trying not to talk too much just so you guys can appreciate it. The woman who I know that was parting ways with this. She actually went to my local church and my church was having a rummage sale. And so she brought it to the rummage sale. And then when she saw me there, she 
uh, she asked me if I wanted it because she knew that I was into this kind of thing and she'd rather have it go to someone who knew her. I didn't know her husband, the one who this own, who owned this, but I knew her and I think, and she appreciated that over some other stranger buying it, which I was very appreciative of. This is a biplane. See, that's why I love things like that, like the, like rummage sales, yard sales, stuff like that. You'll never know what kind of thing you'll find. These sort of diamonds in the rough. So, yes. So now there are some blank pages because they have these randomly uh, peppered in. So if the Germans developed something new that was not accounted for when this was printed, a soldier, uh, an airman, whoever may be owning this may fill out the information that they know, maybe draw a sketch of it, to draw the, uh, write the description of whatever they do now, what kinds of weapons were used against it and things like that. So there's a couple pages in here that are like that. Another blank one. And now you start getting into uh, some of the very unique planes, which I think are just as fascinating. And not a lot of information is known about these at all. Probably some of the information in here is some of the most, even still, up-to-date information about it because some of these planes never actually even flew. Some of these more experimental ones. Like, I can't imagine this BV-141 had much actual service. And you see a lot of it is blank because there's a lot of questions. If you're wondering why I'm handling this with without gloves, um, I have read that with things like historical documents, even historians have started using just their hands because when people wear gloves, they often act much, much rougher with the pages because you can't actually feel how much pressure you're putting on them and things like that. So people, uh, historians have realized that the oil from your skin that gets on the pages is much less damaging than handling it with gloves and being rough and maybe accidentally tearing it because you can't feel the pressure of what you're actually doing to the paper. So having that skin skin contact is important. That's just what I've read. If someone if someone wants to correct me on that, by all means. But this pa this paper is not super frail, so I'm not very worried about it breaking. This is another strange experimental plane that I'm not even sure ever really flew. Although I'm so sure some people are much more knowledgeable about it than me. The G G O. 244. Looks kind of funky. Funky fresh. Lots of blanks in here. Sorry again for my shaky hands. Normally I have a tripod, but oh, this, is a, this is a nice one. This one didn't even have a complete name. The Hine and Kill question mark. Very catchy. I would be shocked if this ever actually took flight. The towing the large ME321 glider. So, uh, same thing, lots of blanks over here. They've seen aerial the the description that they've seen pictures of it but don't know enough about it they were, have never seen it in a combat situation so a lot of this is unknown this is a much more well-known plane i'll start showing you the whole thing instead of just zooming in This one 
looks very, almost looks very modern. Another cool one. I like this one. All the, I'm pretty sure those wheels are non-retractable. So when it flies, you just, you see that, you see all those little wheels while it's in the air. It looks like a bus with wings. The ME323, really catchy names that they chose for these. Some more blanks. There's one. Oh, this is one of those seaplanes. Interesting. So I just thought you guys might want to see this. Again, if someone has more information about this than I do, have has a similar thing, let me know. I haven't seen much information about them on the internet. I've just found one copy that was exact the same exact setup, but for the Italians. So I haven't I didn't purchase it. It was much more expensive. So and I wasn't really ready to pay for that. And I already have one, so I didn't need this one and the Italian one. But yeah. If you know anything about it, please let me know. Another something wild. Really ugly landing gear on that. It looks really non aerodynamic. It's really hard to flip these pages with one hand. Okay, we're getting to the end here. I know this has been a long video. Another blank. I feel like we've already seen this one. Did we, did we not already see Geo 242? Maybe it was a different name, but a very similar picture. I swear it was the same thing now. It's an interesting photo. And that's it, so back is blank. You can see it got a lot of good use, it's very dirty. So I'll show you guys the front again. Just think it's a very fascinating book to go through. But yeah, so if you guys have any um, comments on it or any information about it, please let me know. And that's all for today. Thanks.